Welcome back to my channel, my name is Kerry and today's video is going to be three slow cooker recipes perfect for this time of year. If I'm totally honest, I use my slow cooker all year round. I use it all the time because it's just super, super handy. But this is the time of year when people start getting them back out the cupboards again and think I want something really comforting and really warming as soon as I walk through the door from a long day out or a day at work. So I have this little slow cooker that I picked up from Aldi last year. It was only about £15, so they're not very expensive. And it has a low, a high and a keep warm function on it. And it's just really simple, does what it says on the box. It cooks the food slowly. I did share a slow cooker video last year with five recipes in it, which I will link down below. But this video will be three recipes in containing a Thai green curry, a black bean tortilla soup, and a super comforting vegetable stew with cheesy herby dumplings. I hope you enjoy them. And here we have our ingredients for our vegetable and lentil stew with dumplings. This is just the stew part of the recipe ingredients. So I've got about 450 grams of potatoes, which have been peeled in cubes, 250 grams of brown lentils, which I've rinsed, two large carrots, which I've peeled in cubes, about 200 grams, a large onion, again, which I have just chopped into rather large pieces, enough onion gravy granules there to make about 850 millilitres, 180 grams of frozen spinach, about three large blocks, a vegetable stock pot, some fresh rosemary, 180 grams of frozen peas, and some coriander. We're going to use a teaspoon of coriander and some salt and pepper to season. Let's get it all put into the slow cooker. So here's my slow cooker, no oil. I'm just going to put everything in there. There's our potatoes and it will all cook deliciously. There goes the carrots and the onions, and then we've got our peas and spinach. Just pop it all in there. And here are the lentils. I've just really quickly rinsed them to get any impurities off. And then we've got our vegetable stock pot for a little bit of extra flavor. And the rosemary sprigs, just pull the leaves off there and pop them in. You don't need to chop them because they will reduce down a little bit because they've been in there for such a long time. It gives it a lovely round flavor. And there's our teaspoon of ground coriander. And then I'm just going to pop in my pepper, a nice good uh, bit of pepper in there, black pepper, and then some salt as well. Just a little salt as the stock pot does have a little salt in it already. And then we've got our onion gravy, about 850 mils. You might want to put a little bit more gravy in there later on. If it dries out a little bit, just keep an eye on it. Give it a really good stir. And then... I'm just going to pop the lid on and that's it and leave that for about seven hours or so on low. You could do it on high for about four hours and then about an hour before it's ready, I'm going to do my dumplings. I've got 250 grams of self-raising flour mixed with 140 grams of cold butter. I did that in my food processor. I've added in there for 50 grams of grated Parmesan. You could also use a vegetarian cheese, a tablespoon of dry uh, fresh herbs sage chives and thyme and some salt and pepper and then i've got about 100 grams of 100 grams 100 milliliters of water i'm just going to mix that in with a knife until it all comes together really really simple don't need to use any suet just use butter to make the dumplings and then and just until it's just formed because you want them to be really light and then really quickly flour your hands and then just pop them into ball shapes. I think I do seven because my slow cooker isn't very big, the, the width of it. But you could also transfer the stew to a dish if you wanted to, if you wanted them further apart. And then pop it into the oven to cook for about half an hour. But I'm going to put them all into my slow cooker and then put the lid back on and just leave them for about an hour. And they will cook deliciously i think it was about an hour and 10 minutes in total i left them and they'll just go really really soft there we go there's all my dumplings and they do sort of merge but they're easy to break up when you dish it all out pop the lid on for an hour and then we've got some delicious soft cheesy dumplings you see how they've all sort of joined but it doesn't matter, they still taste the same. I'd like to say if you want them separate, put them out into an oven-proof dish and finish it off in the oven with the dumplings. Then I've just popped them under the grill there for about five minutes. 
while I was getting our plates and things ready, just to brown them off on top. And then we're going to serve up our delicious stew. There we go. Vegetable and brown lentil stew with cheesy herby dumplings. It is delicious, absolutely delicious for a cold winter's day. This recipe is going to be a tortilla soup recipe and we are going to make it nice and creamy with some Philadelphia, which we add at the end, all in the slow cooker, obviously. I'm going to cook it on low all day long. I like to fill mine out with uh, red lentils because we're not having meat in it. You can make a tortilla soup with meat, but I don't eat it, so obviously we leave it out. So we have some tomato puree. We're going to have a teaspoon of tomato puree. I'm going to dice the red pepper. I'm going to finely chop the red onions. We're going to use a teaspoon of the lime juice, about half a cup of red lentils or um, about 100 grams. So this is going to feed two for me and my husband. The children aren't keen on it. So just for us, they're having burgers this evening for their tea. So we're going to have something that we like. But if you're feeding four people, just double it. And it is a big bowl. It's one nice big bowl. It's a full meal, not just a lunchtime soup. I've got a tin of sweet corn. I will use some extra sweet corn to garnish the top as well, but in here I'm going to put a full tin of sweet corn, a tin of black beans. I have got, I'm going to use a teaspoon of chipotle paste because I like the smoky flavour. I'm going to use half a teaspoon of chilli powder and a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I'm going to use a teaspoon of garlic powder and a... Uh, Three garlic cloves, I'm going to crush them, I'm going to make 500 mils of vegetable stock and we're just going to chuck it all in the slow cooker except for the Philadelphia which I will stir through at the end and it makes it really creamy and you could use light Philadelphia as well instead of a double cream or something like that but it's a really really a, a really nice addition to it. So I'm just going to get a few of my ingredients chopped up and then we'll pop it all into the slow cooker. Okay, so I've got my vegetables chopped up and I'm just going to pop it all into the slow cooker. So we've got our one onion, which has been finely diced. And we've got our red bell pepper, also finely diced. Jalapenos, which are from the jar. And um, there's about 15 slices um, there, which I've just finely sliced those as well. I've also got our tin of sweet corn. It's a little 200 gram tin of sweet corn. A little half size. I've drained it, if I can get them all in there. And then I've got my tin of black beans. There we go, pop those in. Drained those as well, as well as I could while they were in the tin. About a tablespoon or so of tomato puree. A teaspoon of garlic powder. Half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Half a teaspoon of chilli powder. This is just a mild chilli powder a teaspoon of lime juice, a teaspoon of chipotle chilli paste, 100 grams of red lentils. I've rinsed them to um, just give them a good clean and take any impurities off them. I haven't soaked these ones because they're going to cook for hours in the slow cooker so there'll uh, be plenty of time for them to cook normally I soak the red lentils so they cook quicker but these ones I haven't and they will be absolutely fine and my three garlic cloves crush those in there and put it all in you've seen any of my videos before, you'll know that we love garlic in this house. There we go. And I've got half a litre of vegetable stock or 500 mils. Pop that in there. Give it a really good stir. Give it a little season with salt and pepper, not too much because you can adjust the seasoning later on. Another quick stir and like I say if you're feeding more than two people I would double the recipe. Pop the lid on, move this back, pop my slow cooker on to low 
and I'm just going to let that cook for about five hours and then I'll come back and I'll stir in my Philadelphia and let that finish cooking. There we go, there is our soup ready. I did actually leave it for seven hours before I put the Philadelphia in. I put about 120 grams of Philadelphia in, a little extra salt, and just stirred it and I've left it for another hour. Um, well, about 40 minutes. So it is definitely one of those dishes that you can leave all day and go to work. You could have done it for 10 hours and then added the Philadelphia while you just uh, chop up all your extras to go on top. So I'm gonna dish this out, I'm gonna garnish it and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. And there we go. There is my tortilla soup recipe. I've just topped it with some yellow pepper, some red onion, some tomatoes, a little spring onion, some grated cheese, some more jalapenos, and a toasted tortilla, just a white, like a white wrap, just into a non-stick dry frying pan and just toasted it on each side for a minute or so, just on a medium heat. And it just gives a lovely crunch to your soup and you've got all those fresh flavours of the vegetables on top. It is absolutely delicious and I cannot wait to eat this. I think my husband's more excited than me to be honest. There we go. Tortilla soup. I hope you try the recipe and hope you love it. I am just about to make my curry paste for our Thai green curry which I'm going to make in the slow cooker. You don't have to do this right before you do it, you can do it the night before, you could do it a few days before, a week before and freeze it. So this will make more than what I need today for the slow cooker meal, but I am going to freeze the rest that's left over and I'll use it again for another curry or I'll use it to make soup. So our ingredients are about five uh, little black peppercorns that you can see there, a teaspoon of cumin seed, and a teaspoon and a half of coriander seeds. I'm going to dry fry these in a small pan and then I'm going to put the, enhance the flavour and then I'm going to grind them in my pestle and mortar before I add it to the rest of the ingredients. And you don't have to grind it, you could just add it straight into your um, food processor or blender, whichever you're using, or um, mix it in depending however you've done everything but by uh, using the pestle and mortar, it will then help release some of those flavours that we've enhanced with the dry frying. But it is, you don't have to grind them if you don't have the pestle and mortar. Just pop them straight in with all your ingredients after you've dried fried them. Again, you don't have to dry fry them, but it will make it taste amazing. And it only takes one minute, just a minute. And then the rest of the ingredients are a small onion roughly chopped, it's about 60 grams of onion, um, two stems of coriander, leaves and stems all together, five green chilies, uh, two garlic cloves roughly sliced. I'm going to use a teaspoon of galangal paste. If you haven't heard of this, it is like, it's a Thai ingredient and it's like, chi um, not chilli, ginger, but just a milder um, flavour. And I'm going to use a teaspoon of lime juice and I'm going to use just under a tablespoon of lemongrass paste uh, because I prefer that to the fresh lemongrass. That's just my opinion. It's easier to use. I can keep it in the fridge and I can use it whenever I want to. And a half a teaspoon of salt. I am also going to use a tablespoon of oil. I'm going to put all the ingredients except for these into my little blender, which is just an attachment from my um, stick blender and whiz it all up. And then once I've dry fried these and um, bashed them a bit with my pestle and mortar, I'll pop those in there too and mix it all together. And then we'll have our Thai green curry paste. And then once I've done that, I'll show you how I do it. And then I'll show you how we create our slow cooker recipe. And of course, you do not have to do this. You could buy a jar of Thai green curry paste if that's what you want to do. I just enjoy doing this and I like all the smells in the house and and I like the achievement of doing it all myself almost from scratch. I know I've got a couple of jars there um, but I do I do enjoy it so I'll show you how I do this. I've got a tiny little pan here which I normally use for frying an egg for my husband if I'm making him a bacon egg sandwich. And I'm just going to put the heat on a medium to high heat and then pop in our seeds. Give them a little shake. 
and you just need to do it for a minute or so until they sort of start to sizzle and pop and it only takes a minute in the pan no oil or anything it's just bringing out the flavors of the seeds cumin seeds coriander seeds and five black peppercorns there we go come on now it's almost on high and it is my smallest ring because i just i didn't want to get a big pan out to be honest just to <laughs> roast a few little seeds you just need to be careful that once they start popping you take it off because you don't want them to burn you don't want a burnt flavor in your curry paste so i'm just starting to brown there now probably can't hear the sizzle from the camera maybe Just start, there you go, they're just starting to move about and to pop and to sizzle and they're ready. So that's it, that's as, as quick as it is. Totally ready and I'm going to pop them into my pestle and mortar. There we go, there's my seeds and I'm going to give that a bit of a bash and just to release all those lovely roasted flavours. Absolutely divine. It smells absolutely gorgeous. There we go, and I just pop that to one side. So I'm going to add my onions and my coriander, the garlic, the chilies. Make sure we catch them all there. I have deseeded the chilies as well, the majority of them. If it was just Steve and I eating it and not my children, I possibly would leave the seeds in. We do like it spicy. And we've got a teaspoon of lime juice, a teaspoon of galangal paste. Just under a tablespoon of lemongrass paste, half a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of sunflower oil I'm using. Pop my whizzer, my hand blender on top and we'll just whiz it up. And there is the curry paste and well the ingredients I've had in there so far and then I'm just going to scrape out my um, seeds that I've had given them a bit of a bash in the pestle and mortar pop the lid back on Give it another little whiz. And there we go. There is my Thai green curry paste. And it will, it's not completely and totally nutly smooth, but that's okay. It's not, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not out of a jar, it's homemade. I'll probably use most of it, maybe three tablespoons and keep a tablespoon back. It's probably about four tablespoons in there. And um, once I take it all out and use the rest, like I say, for a soup. So now I'm going to get the rest of my ingredients for my Thai green curry. That's all going to go into my slow cooker. Here are my ingredients for our Thai green curry. It is going to be a butternut squash Thai green curry. And there is the curry paste. And I have, excuse the butternut squash on my fingers. I have just been chopping it up. Um, they're in a little bag. There's about two tablespoons left of the curry paste. I'm going to freeze that and we'll make a soup with it in a few weeks time. So for our ingredients, we've got a butternut squash, which I have just very carefully taken the outer layer of skin off with a vegetable peeler. I haven't taken it all off completely because there's so much goodness in it. I just didn't want it to be um, too hard on the outside for the children to make sure that they eat it. Just 
this um oxo good grips um i've just used it <laughs> oxo good grips vegetable peeler and just peel the sides scooped out the seeds and then cut it into cubes and it's going to be in the slow cooker so it's going to cook lovely i've got three tablespoons of my thai green curry paste i have a um one of it's like a half and half pack of monge two and baby corn so i've got baby corn here and i've halved them i've got a red pepper which I've just cut into chunks and I've got my mange too and a tin of coconut milk and I'm just going to pop all of that into the slow cooker and cook it for about six hours. That's it. T totally and utterly done and I'll make some rice when it's almost ready and serve it all up. So let's get it all popped into the slow cooker. So we've got our butter squash. Let's see if I can get all of this in without tipping it all over the bench there we go and my baby corn the mange too red pepper a tin of coconut milk oh lovely nice i lo really like this brand i mean you can use any you like but it's always lovely and thick the the kingfisher one i really do like it and then i'm going to scoop in my three tablespoons of curry paste. Give it a really good stir and you know it's all just going to cook in together so you don't have to do too much to it. The lid will be on and as with a slow cooker the um, moisture will stay in and it will, it's all going to cook down and it's going to make a delicious curry with a delicious sauce. Now it just looks like a bunch of vegetables I suppose but once that's cooked that will be really really tasty pop the lid on I've got my big hoodie on I'm freezing cold and I'm gonna pop it on to low I'm just gonna let that cook and that is it that is I don't know how it could get any easier than that really the Thai green curry paste took me five minutes chopping the butternut squash took five minutes maybe all together and then another couple of minutes for the vegetables, two minutes to put in there. So you've got 15 minutes and it's all in there and it'll be ready later on for us to all eat as a family together. I've got my rice soaking. I've rinsed it having basmati rice with it because I don't have any jasmine rice. And so I've got that soaking now because I'm going to cook that in about 10 minutes. But my sauce is a little thin. So all I'm going to do is I've got um, some corn flour, which I've mixed with water. And I'm just going to pour it in. I'm going to give it a stir. And while I'm letting my rice soak and cook it, that'll just thicken up nicely. And there we go. Here is our Thai green curry from the slow cooker. Just made some rice. You can see why I keep the skin on the butternut squash so it keeps it together. The other pieces go a little softer, but they do help to thicken the sauce up. But it tastes delicious. All the vegetables are really soft and nice. If you want crunchy vegetables with the curry, you do have to do it in a pan. But if you're happy for them to be soft, it is a really lovely, easy, mild, fragrant dish to have in the slow cooker. And we've got all four of them there. We're all going to sit down together and eat them. So there you go. There is my Thai green curry slow cooker recipe. Let me know what your favorite slow cooker recipe is do you make any meat free meals in your slow cooker because I'm finding a few people saying to me I didn't realize you could do these types of meals in the slow cooker I hardly use mine but hopefully I'm going to come up with some more for everybody and I will see you in the next one bye <laughs>